Barakat the Yahweh, Barakat the Yahweh Shai, all the praises, all the honor, all the glory be unto Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Akakwadash, all praises and every glory be unto Yahweh, our Heavenly Father, in the name of His only begotten Son, our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai, and the Holy Spirit. Double honors to our apostles and our elders at Great Moonstone that taught us His truth and who rule well. Peace and love, say, taste and mercy be unto you. Hopefully, like Akim, that are the prophets and teachers of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh who are hazarding your lives to push the true message of the Bible, the true wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of the Bible, magnifying and praising the true names of Yahweh Yahweh Shai. To the rest of you believers that are throughout the four corners of the earth that do believe in Yahweh Bashim Yahweh with your whole heart, mind, body, and spirit. And are waiting for these last and final prophecies. You Akim, if you are and peace be unto you in Shalom. I've been reading this book, which is entitled The Peculiar Institution, which I've uh, done lessons on this book before. And the peculiar institution is dealing with the institution of slavery. All right, that happened to our people here all right, within America, all right, within North America. And now reading this book, man, it got me heated. All right, it got me heated and it got me meditating terror. All right, and how we're going to pay back this devil in the kingdom of heaven for all of the gruesome things, all right, that he has done into our people. All right, you may have seen by now there was a video that was shared by uh, one of the brothers via uh, YouTube. Well, and it was going into race, okay, you're white, you're an pretty much how this you're devil black, is trying to uh, hide their history. All right. Which, um, actually, if you look around the country, the, they do have that the devil is lying again. Land. That is you know, and uh, basically, it's the DeSantis uh, saying it was wrong to teach students that the U.S. was built on stolen land because it isn't true. All right. <laughs> It was built on stolen land. And after you stole the land from the so-called Native Americans and Seminole Indians and the so-called, you know, Mexicans and the rest of the Latino tribes or the Latino community, which really are the 10 tribes of Israel, all of them collectively, you brought the so-called Negroes over here and you force them to work the land under free labor, under free labor, free untaxed labor. All right, under the penalties and conditions that if they didn't meet your demand, all right, in, in, in the forced labor that you were putting upon them, that the penalties would result in many different, you know, uh, uh, punishments as well as casualties because the punishments that you were inflicting on them in terms sometimes made the slave lose their lives. So rather there been lynchings, rather it be hunging or hangings, you know, rather it be multiple different forms of brutality. I read in the, in the uh, slave narrative or, or narratives of the slave, whatever that book is called, it's like a blue book and it has different accounts of slave, uh, um, their encounters that they had within slavery. You know, some of them were saying that, you know, they witnessed deaths or either they went went through punishments. You know, there was one, uh, a girl in particular, where it was said that a sla uh, a, one of her slave masters being a woman beat, beat. She, she witnessed someone get beat to death with a hot iron or get burnt by a hot iron. I can't remember it. You know, infants were losing their lives, being beat by women. All right, it wasn't just, you know, uh, Esau, the, the, the man, you know, but it was also their women as well. You know, and sometimes they were more cruel than the men. So there was a bunch of different things that our people suffered at your hand. So you're going to be recompensed. All right, you had... Uh, um, buck breaking you had a derby dose you know which was a foul act 
All right, both of those were foul acts and all of it. You know, it was a derby dose with slave masters pooping inside of slaves' mouths. All right, the buck breaking, you know, embarrassing, you know, the, the, the strong male in front of the, west, the, the rest, you know, of the slaves on the slave plantation, you know, in order to break their pride, to break their spirit. You know, you would, you would, uh, um, emasculate a man by way of, you know, penetrating him, which was a gross and foul act. You know, and there's many different things, you know, shaving off of a slave's hair, using it within furniture, you know, to cushion your furniture, you know, filleting their skin and making leather out of it. And you think that the Heavenly Father has forgotten any of this? All right, the Most High Heavenly Father hasn't forgot any of it. And although you're trying to strike, you know, these things from the record, you're trying to strike them from the history books. You know, the scripture says that shameful spewing shall be upon your glory. And all of your accounts and the things that you have done are being brought back to the light. And you hate this. All right, you hate all of your shameful acts being thrown up in your face. So at every moment, you're trying to find a way to erase it, to strike it from the records and make those that have been oppressed and afflicted by you to forget. And even if you can make a lot of us forget, the Heavenly Father hasn't forgotten. So there will be a day of retribution. Habakkuk 2 and 16, thou art filled with shame for glory. Drink thou also and let thy foreskins be uncovered. The cup of Yahweh's right hand shall be turned unto thee and shameful spewing shall be on thy glory. So all of that glory, all, right, all of that, that fame, all of that reputation that you have had thus far that you have really given unto yourself as being great and honorable in which you're not. There's shameful spewing that's being brought upon that. And that's all of the foul and wicked atrocities that you have done being brought to the forefront, being brought back into the light by the prophets of Yahweh Bashmiah Washa through the Holy Spirit. Now to read, you know, uh, different accounts within this book, you know, I'm gonna go to uh, different pages and I'll start right here in uh, uh, this particular chapter, which I believe this is chapter two, but it's called From Day Clear, uh, From Day Clean to First Dark. All right, because that's how you will work our people. <laughs> you will work them from, from before dawn all the way up until dusk. All right. And beyond that, all right, there's accounts where slaves were worked for 16 to 18 hours a day. That's fucking crazy, man. They will work them for 16 to 18 hours a day. That means if you started work at 6 a.m., you work past 6 p.m., you will still have chores to do. If that was feeding, uh, uh, giving fodder into, you know, cattle, all right, if that was cleaning up particular pens, so you may not get off until one in the morning. And after you've got off at one in the morning, you still got to eat. So you might take you about 30 minutes to eat. Then it may take you about 30 minutes to fall asleep. So you're going to sleep ar around maybe 2 a.m. And, and maybe 3 a.m., which means that you really only got three hours of fucking sleep. You Edomites, you ain't gonna sleep in the kingdom. We're gonna always have something for you to do. We're gonna make up things for you to do. Shev shovel the air. <laughs> I don't know how the hell you're gonna do that, but you're gonna shovel air. If it ain't no rocks to break, if it ain't no fields to plow, if it ain't no crops to plant, we're gonna find something for you to do. And you're gonna, you're gonna be begging and wishing that the Sabbath day come because it's the only day that you're going to be able to get rest. 
If we got spiritual power, we might make that day only last, <laughs> you know, two hours. But anyways, reading from here, and I believe this account is dealing with uh, Solomon Northup, which you would have probably seen the movie by now. Uh, with um, that particular actor, I forget uh, his name. Let's see, we can we can Google it and find out uh, the actor's name. But it was it was a pretty good movie, you know. It was one of the slave movies um, that I that I actually like. You know, some of them I believe that they don't they don't capture the realness, you know, of the circumstances that were happening within that time. And this is one of them that I believe you know, captures it. Let's see. Let's see if we can find this actor's name. Um, True Tell and, and, jo and Joyf Joyfer. All right, it also had Lupita and Yango in there as well. Well, she's a, um, a famous actor. Brad Pitt was in there as well. Uh, Benedict uh, Cumberbatch was in there as well, as well as... Uh, Paul Giamatti, which these are names you should be familiar with, you know, because these are major stars and whatnot. But it reads, it says in the years before the Civil War, which that would be considered the antebellum. All right. This would be the antebellum South dealing with the years before the war. In the years before the Civil War, Solomon Northup, Chuatel and Joffer, that's the actor that played him, a free black man from upstate New York is kidnapped and sold into slavery in the South, subjected to the cruelty of one uh, malevolent owner, Michael Fassbender. This is the actor that played, you know, the owner. He also finds unexpected kindness from another, you know? So anyways, what we're getting ready to read is an account from Solomon Northup. And it reads, another slave found his life less uh, leisurely on a plantation on the Red River in Louisiana. The hands, the hands are required to be in the cotton field as soon as it is light in the morning. So that means that you have to get up before it's light so that you can make it to the cotton field and be in the field by the time the light comes up. And with the uh, exception of 10 to 15 minutes, which is given them at noon to swallow their allowance of cold bacon, they are not permitted to be a moment idle until it is too dark to see. So what does that mean? That they were that they get up when it was dark. And by the time that they got done laboring, it was dark again. And when the moon is full. They oftentimes labor till the middle of the night. So sometimes they'll be laboring till it's about 12, 12 a.m. Work did not end when the slaves left the fields. Each one must attend to his respective chores. One feeds the mules, another the swine, another cuts the wood, and so forth. Besides, the packing of cotton is all done by candlelight. Finally, at a late hour, they reached the quarter sleepy and overcome with a long day's toil. These are the bitter memories of Solomon Northrop. See? So they were literally <laughs> working our people from dark to dark. As Apostle Tahar calls it, from can't see to can't see. And the time is going to come. You, you, <laughs> Hey, look, you're going to be paid back for this. All right, don't think that you've escaped. All right, you've trusted and manifest destiny all right, thus far. And you believe that it, it brought you to this point. Well, look, manifest destiny didn't stop with y'all. All right, the Heavenly Father set it up for you to be in rulership and to rule over us in this particular manner, just as well as he set it up for us to rule after you and forever and for you for a thousand years to endure the conditions of what you put us through. All right. How do you like that? Now, this is going to page 77. And 
let me see exactly where do I want to start. Let's jump down here. It says it would not be too much to say that masters usually demanded from their slaves a long and hard work and managed by some means or others to get it. The evidence does not sustain the belief that free labor generally work longer. Free laborers generally work longer hours at a brisker pace than the unfree during the months when the crops uh, were being cultivated or harvested the slaves commonly were in the fields 15 or 16 hours a day all right including time allowed for meals and rest by antebellum standards this may not have been excessive but it was not a light work routine by the standards of any other any other day so that was 15 to 16 hours or right, this particular page says but it gets worse than this now going over to page 84 it reads this uh Masters who hired their slaves to others also helped to create conditions favoring ruthless exploitation. The overworking of hired slaves by employers with only a temporary interest in their welfare was as notorious as the harsh practices of the overseers. Slaves hired to mine owners, uh, mine owners or railroad contractors were fortunate if they were not driven to the point where their health was impaired. The same danger confronted slaves hired to sugar pl planters during the grinding season of the cotton planters at picking time. Few Southern Southerners familiar with these conditions would have challenged the assertion made before a South Carolina court that hired slaves were commonly treated more harshly than those in possession of their own owners. But the master was as responsible for the conduct of those who hired his, his slaves as he was for the conduct of the overseer he employed. Overworked slaves were not always the innocent victims of force beyond his control. There were remedies which he sometimes failed to apply. A stanch defender of slavery described a set of uh, avaricious planters whom he labeled cotton snobs or the southern or southern yankees in their frantic quest for wealth he wrote indignantly the crack of the whip was heard early and late until their bondsmen were bound to the ground with overtasking and over toil a Southern physician who practiced on many cotton plantations complained in 1847 that some masters still regarded their role, their sole interest to consist in large crops, leaving out of view altogether the value of Negro property and its possible deterioration. During the economic depression of the 1840s, a planter accused, accused certain cotton growers of trying to save themselves by increasing the cotton acreage and by driving their slaves harder uh, with the result that slaves broke down from overwork. And our asses are still being overworked. All right, ain't nothing changed but the, but the, the, the name of the slave plantation. So instead of being from the Williams plantation, instead of being from uh, the Johnson plantation, your ass is from the Michigan plantation, you're from the Louisiana plantation, all right? You're from the Alabama plantation, all right? These are all of the names of the states, all right, that own you as property. And that's the reason that you have an ID card, which ain't nothing but a slave pass, man. All right, we're still in slavery, and you, you're still being old, overworked. The only difference is your slave masters don't have to uh, uh, house you. They don't have to feed you. You're a self-sufficient slave 
that don't have the yoke of irons upon your neck, all right? But we're still under the yoke. We're still in bondage, all right? Nothing has changed. You thought that the abolishment, all right, uh, uh, of, of slavery actually was something that, that really happened. No, slavery wasn't abolished. Slavery was, uh, um, em there was an emancipation, a transfer of slaves, all right? So I'll read this last page and then I'll get into some scriptures, which this is uh, page 85, which reads, on the sugar plantation during the months of the harvest, slaves were driven to the point of complete exhaustion. Do you know how hard you have to work somebody to complete exhaustion? If you ride a horse too long, eventually that heart, the, uh, the heart of that horse, all right, would, 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 would uh, burst, you know, and not burst per se, but eventually as strong as the heart of a horse is, eventually that horse can have a heart attack, you know, due to exhaustion. So do you know how hard you have to work someone until exhaustion to the point that they faint, to the point where they pass out? All right, they were working us like horses, all right, as one of these particular uh, slave drivers is going to say within this passage. So reading on, they were in the normal routine work for from 16 to 18 hours a day, seven days a week. So that means that they didn't get a break. So if you're thinking about this and comparing it to how you work within the society, if you work in seven days or six days a week and you working upward from from six, 16 to 18 hours. All right, you may not work it on one job, but you might be so far behind that you got to work two jobs. So you get off from working one job to work the other one just so that you can continue to go by, get by. You got people that own houses and they still got to work. But wait. Why do you still have to work if you own a house? Because you don't own the land, which means that you still got to pay taxes. If you own the land, all you got to do is live on your land and grow your own crops. So you're forced to constantly keep laboring. All right. You're forced to constantly keep having to work. Reading on. Cotton planters who boasted about making 10 bells per hand were unconsciously testifying that their, their slaves were overworked. An overseer on an Arkansas plantation set his goal to 12 bells to the hand and indicated that this was what his employer desired. On a North Carolina plantation, a temporary overseer assured the owner that he was a whole hog man, rain, and, rain or shine, and boasted that the slaves had not been working like men, but like horses. See, so they worked us like animals. So it's fair to say that the slavery that happened to our people over here within this land. All right, that it was cattle slavery. This is like this is like a, a, that's the reason why they call it cattle slavery, because they were working us like animals. I'd rather be dead than to be a nigger. On one of these big plantations, a white Mississippian told Olmstead, well, guess what? The scriptures say that, that Yahweh shall bring your fears upon you. All right. You gonna get what you what you quoted because the time is going to come where you are going to be a nigger on a plantation. All right. You are the true niggers. And the time is going to come when you are going to be working our plantations. You're going to be working our fields because the cup that was in our hand is going to pass over to you. Sooner or later, excessive labor was bound to take a toll, take its toll in the heat of the midsummer. Slaves who could not bear hard driving without sufficient rest at noon simply collapsed in the fields in Mississippi. A planter reported numerous cases of sunstroke 
in his, uh, in his neighborhood during a spell of extreme heat. His own slaves gave up. On a Florida plantation, a number of hands fainted in the field one hot August day. Even in Virginia, hot weather and heavy labor caused the death of many Negroes in the harvest field. So you really worked our people to death. Now, I was looking into this because if you're working 16 to 18 hours a day, out in the field and then you get off and you still have to do chores and you get to the point where it's time to go to sleep but you're only getting three hours of sleep that's not enough sleep for a, a healthy adult male or woman and the younger you are the more sleep you need I actually looked up the uh, the health benefits of sleep and these are some of the things that will happen to you if you're sleep deprived. Now, let's let's go here. I'll read this first. It says adults uh, 65 plus years uh, need seven to eight hours. Adults 26 to 64 need seven to nine hours of sleep. Young adults 18 to 25 need seven to nine hours of sleep. Teenagers 14 to 17 need eight to 10 hours of sleep. School age children, six to 13 years, needs nine to 11 hours. Preschool children, three to five, needs 10 to 13 hours. Toddlers, all right, one to two years old, may, uh, needs 11 to 14 hours. Infants, 14 to 11 months, needs 12 to 15 hours. Newborns, zero to three months, need 14 to 17 hours, which of course you might not sleep you know, uh, um, being a teenager, eight to 10 hours, you know, uh, consecutively, you might sleep seven hours, eight hours, and you wake up and then you might get, you know, a nap, a two hour or three hour nap. And the same thing for an adult, whatever. But our people was not getting that within slavery. You get me? They were not getting that. So what, did it, what would that lead to ultimately above, above all? Reading this from the same article, which just comes from the healthclevelandclinic.org. If you continue operating without enough sleep, you may see more long-term and serious health problems. Some of the most serious potential problems associated with chronic sleep deprivation are high blood pressure, diabetes, heart attack, heart failure or stroke. Other pot uh, potential problems include obesity, depression, reduced immune system functions, and lower sex drive. Chronic sleep deprivation can even affect your appearance. Over time, it can lead to premature wrinkle and dark circles under the eyes. These are also a link between lack of sleep and the increase in the amount of stress hormone which is cortisol in your body cortisol can break down collagen and protein that keeps skin smooth uh, in other words a lack of sleep could mean more wrinkles so basically you're aging fast all right and your body is breaking down and a lot of those things sound similar, right? It sounds similar to what you have been hearing of things that we, we would suffer as, as curses when you go into the book of Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, beginning at verse 60. Moreover, I will bring you and all, um, I will bring upon you all the diseases of Egypt, which thou was afraid of, and they shall cleave unto thee. And every sickness and every plague, which is not written in the book of the law, then will Yahweh bring upon thee until thou be destroyed. All right, jumping ahead to verse 65. And among these nations shalt thou find no ease, neither shall the sole of thy feet have rest, but Yahweh shall give thee their trembling heart and the felling of eyes and the sorrow of mind. All right, it also mentioned that some were dying from sunstroke. All right, out in those fields because they were being overdriven. They were being exalted. I'm um, so like it, exhausted. 
All right, not giving the proper water and nutrition and being overworked. So they were they were dropping dead out in the fields from being worked to death. And sunstroke ain't nothing to play with. All right, when you read Judith 8 and 3, her husband all right, died from a sunstroke. When you read uh, 2 Kings, the uh, fourth chapter, you had the Shumanite woman, all right, who Elisha prophesied would have a child. All right, that child went out to uh, uh, see his father, you know, while he was out in the fields with the, with the, the harvesters or, or the planters, you know, and the child screamed out to his father, my head, my head, because he eventually suffered a sunstroke, you know, so the child was carried to his mother and laid on her lap, which eventually he died. So a sunstroke ain't nothing to play around with. It's something serious. All right, it also mentioned the lack of co collagen, which um, studies, according to the webmd.com, it says studies have shown that daily collagen supplements can help make your bones denser, showing the, the, um, the aging process that makes them brittle and helping your body to produce new, bo new bone. You got our people suffering from osteoporosis all right, or, or osteoarthritis, Salakia, all right, which they have pain. They have all kind of pain within their knees. All right, they get pain within particular joints. Imagine how it was back then being under these harsh conditions. All right, but the scripture says that we would go through those things and we went through it as a punishment from the Heavenly Father and you were happy and joyful, all right, to put us under those conditions. But the time is going to come when you are put under them. The book of Lamentations 5 and 5 through 8, and let me clarify who I'm speaking about. I'm speaking about Esau Edom, the self-proclaimed white man. You were happy to put our people through these conditions as well as other nations. And the time is going to come when y'all, beginning with you, are going to face the similar condition. All right. You are going to receive double for the things that you have done unto the Israelites. Lamentation 5 and 5. Our necks are under persecution. We labor and have no rest. See? <laughs> So the scripture says that we will go through that, that we will labor and have no rest. You know, amongst these nations, we will be scattered with serving and slavery. We, our souls of our feet will have no ease. Look, we didn't have any rest. All right. Uh, we have given uh, the hand to the Egyptians and the Assyrians to be satisfied with bread. Our fathers have sinned. And are not, and we have borne their iniquities. Servants have ruled over us. There is none that doth deliver us out of their hand. Why? Because in the book of Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, it says that there shall be none to save you. Now we're going to be saved because 2,000 years ago, beginning with Yahweh Shai, right, the sacrifice that he made, right, which was a payment and a ransom. And by us believing upon him, if we be a part of the elect, he's going to physically redeem us. Now, he's more than just a regular man. So no regular man upon the planet Earth will be able to redeem us. But Yahweh Shai will. All right. The scripture speaks of him sending forth his angels throughout the four corners of the earth and gathering the elect. Now, once the elect are established, all right, in the, king, uh, um, in the kingdom of heaven, when they come coming down from heaven as New Jerusalem with Yahweh Shai, all right, what do you think that we're going to do? Who do you think is going to be building up our kingdom? It's not going to be us. We're not going to labor and toil. All right, matter of fact, the scriptures say in the book of Isaiah 65 and 22, they shall not build, all right, and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For as the days of a tree are the days of my people, and mine elect shall long enjoy the works of their hands. But it's not going to be us that are actually working. All right, we're going to have servants, and our servants are going to be a fool. Esau, Edom, as well as the rest of the nations. All right, the scripture says that the, um, that the heathen shall build up thy walls. Let's get that one as well. All 
All right, it also mentioned the sons of strangers being divine dressers. All right, I believe that's Isaiah, the 60th chapter. And I'll start at uh, 9. It says, Surely the isles wait for me, and the ships of tar Tarshish first to bring thy sons from far, and the silver and their gold with them, unto the name of Yahweh thy power, the Holy One of Israel, because he hath glorified thee. The sons of strangers shall build up thy walls. See? The sons of strangers shall build up thy wall, and their kings shall minister unto thee. What does it mean to minister? To serve. What's another word for slave? Serve? To be a slave. For in my wrath I smote thee, but in my favor I had mercy on thee. See? I had mercy on thee. Therefore the gates shall be open continually, and shall not be shut day nor night, that men may bring unto you the forces of the Gentiles, and that their kings may be brought. The forces of the Gentiles is what? Their riches. All of their, their, their goods, the best of everything that they have, whether it be fabric, whether it be fruits and crops, you know, their gold, their silver, you know, their precious stones, you know, their daughters. All of these things will be brought. And it says, and their kings may be brought. So why are their kings being brought? Well, their kings are being brought to serve us, all right, to be our servants. The scripture says that thy king shall be, their kings shall be our nursing fathers and their queens our nursing mothers, and they shall come bending unto us, bowing unto us. When you bow unto someone, that means that that person you're bowing, bowing unto is blessed. For the nations and kingdoms that will not serve thee shall perish, Yet yeah, those nations shall be utterly wasted. So we're going to have these other nations in slavery, beginning with Esau, Edom. Now, going to the book of Habakkuk, actually, no, I'll skip past that one because I read it earlier. This is the book of Lamentation 4 and 21. Rejoice and be glad, O daughter of Edom, that dwellest in the land of us. The cup shall pass through unto thee. And thou shalt be drunken and shalt make thyself naked. The punishment of thine iniquity is accomplished, O daughter of Zion, and I will no more carry thee away into captivity. He will visit thine iniquity, O daughter of Edom. He will discover thy sins. So reading all of that, what does it mean the cup shall pass unto thee? All right, if it describes in verse 22 that... Um, the children of Israel went into captivity, all right? But it's saying that the cup shall be taken away from them and it shall be given unto Edom. What does that mean? That means that the children of Israel are going to be taken out of captivity and the children of Edom will be put in captivity. And that's how the Heavenly Father is going to visit your iniquities upon you. All right, the scriptures say in the book of Isaiah 51 and 21, Therefore hear now this, thou afflicted and drunken, but not with wine. Yeah, because we have drunken of the hand of the Heavenly Father, but we have, dr have not drunken wine. What did we drink? We drunk down the dregs of his punishment. And part of that punishment was to go into captivity, to be in servitude. Thus said Yahweh power, and thy, and thy power that pleadeth, the cause of his people, behold, I have taken out of thy hand the cup of trembling, even the dregs of the cup of my fury, and thou shalt uh, no more drink it again. But I will put it into the hands of such of them that have afflicted thee, or that afflict thee, and will put it into the hands of them that afflict thee, which have said to thy soul, bow down, that we may go over, and thou has laid thy body as the ground and as the streets to them that went over. So that's speaking about slavery. All right, that means that these other nations helped to bring us down low. And being in a low condition, they trampled all over us. They walked all over us. All right, they treated us like a, like a, a less than a floor mat. But the time is gonna come when things are gonna reverse. All right, we're going to put you in, in um, slavery. All right, and, and you don't have to worry about being idle. 
The scriptures say in the book of Sirach 33 and 24, 24, fodder and a wine and a burden are for the ass and bread correction and work for a servant. If thou set thy servant to labor, thou shalt, thou shalt find rest. See, and that's the reason why we'll be able to long enjoy the work of our labor because we're going to have others labor. If you're working, you know, in the field and if you're building up something, how can you long enjoy the work of your labor? All right, we're working now. And guess what? You don't get to enjoy, you know, any time. All right, you you, you might go to work at um, at 9 a.m. All right, you may not get off to 8 p.m. All right, so you're working upward from 10 to 12 hours a day. How in the hell can you long enjoy the work of your labor? That proves that in the kingdom of heaven, we're not going to labor. All right, we're not going to labor. We're not going to toil. We're not going to be uh, uh, getting things in the sweat of our brow. We're going to be at rest, man. All right, and we're going to have service that service. If thou set thy servant to labor, thou shalt find rest. But if thou let him go idle, he shall seek liberty. A yoke and a collar do bow the neck, so are tortures and torments for an evil servant. Send him to labor, that he be not idle, for idleness teacheth much evil. All right? Idleness teacheth much evil. So in the kingdom of heaven, Esau, Edom, you're not going to have to worry about being idle. We're going to always find something to do. All right? If you ain't head button rocks, to split them in peace, all right, or, or, or chewing, you know, our line to keep it grazed and at a at a, a, a particular length. If you ain't shoveling air because it ain't nothing else to do, which is gonna always be something to do, I'm just saying that facetiously. All right, the only time that you're gonna get rest is on the Sabbath. All right, you're getting woke up soon as you. Think you fall asleep and you getting put right back to labor. Because we're going to double unto you what you have done unto us. The scriptures justify you going into slavery for having us in slavery. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. They that devour thee shall be devoured. All thy adversaries, every one of them shall go into captivity. So with that, I truly hope that this lesson was edifying our praises, honor, and glory be unto Yahweh by Shem Shai. Double honors to our apostles and elders at Great Millstone. Peace and love, say, taste and mercy be unto the hopeful elect. Shalom, Abba, Baba, Kwan Shalom.